Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wakefield Memorial High School here in Wakefield, Massachusetts for tonight's Division II North MIAA Boys Basketball State Tournament Action featuring the Belmont Marauders, who technically are the visiting team on tonight's broadcast, and the Boston Latin Academy Dragons. I'm Coach Jan Kuman, joined in the box by the oft-imitated but never duplicated Coach Joshua Streit. Coach, two convincing wins for the Belmont Marauders in the first two rounds. More of the same tonight, or a tougher challenge ahead for them? So I hope you brought your running shoes tonight, Jan. It's going to be an absolute track meet. Both teams are going to play fast, and this is going to be the first real test to the crown for Belmont tonight. This game is going to be back and forth. We're going to be flying all over the place. And Belmont's going to try to play their game, but it's going to play right into the hands of the Dragons, who like to go quick pace, like to push the ball. And we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. The Dragons, known to run as well, are going to win off of the tip and go right to the rack. Unable to convert there is number one, Muhammad Ali. Belmont coming right back as Kevin Logan possesses and hands it off to Naruzi. Minikazi now thinks about the shot, then takes it to the hole, draws contact, no call off, and Naruzi's hand's going to be Dragons basketball. And what we talked a lot about in the uh, Bell Ricky game is as soon as Belmont gets a rebound, their push, you saw immediately on that uh, Tianu Santos press, pressuring the ball as soon as Minikazi got the rebound. It's going to try to slow down Belmont's speed. Mason Lawson off there to Nemo Stuppard. He's unable to convert, and Belmont's up with it after Kevin Logan goes to the floor. Tipped ahead to Preston Jackson-Stevens by Mac Annis, and now Naruzi settles. Minikazi and the energy already here at Wakefield High School is electric. Naruzi sees Mac Annis. Annis being defended by Lawson. Pass is taken by the Dragons. Here's Stuppard now. Nifty left hand, but can't finish. No points yet here in the first. Just under seven minutes. Jackson Stevens with a nice move. Little runners off the back iron. He can't finish. Both teams around the basket, but nobody able to find the mark yet. All shots contested, but nothing dropping right now. Mason Lawson kicks it out to Ali in the corner. He's short. Minikazi on the break, loses the handle, tries to go to the rack, gets it back. Logan on the block. Nifty on the baseline, first points of the night. That was like a veteran move from the young sophomore. Very patient, very calm. Instead of kicking it right out to Minikazi, he held his pivot foot and got up and under. Starting to hit his stride is the sophomore Kevin Logan as Tianu Santos beats the press. Can't finish, offensive rebound for the Dragons, fighting underneath Belmont basketball. One of the things I'm seeing right now is the importance of Kevin Logan and Tim Minakasi down low, contesting all these around the basket in the paint shots. So far, the Dragons haven't hit one. And again, the big sophomore as they work the little press play break play. I saw them work in practice. Preston Jackson Stevens with the head fake. Can't finish, goes back up with it. Stout defense by the Dragons. Mason Lawson now, working on Naruzi. Tough defense there, rebound by Wagari, and he finishes, tie game. The thing you're seeing is Belmont, who, who we saw so often against Redding and Bel Belwicka, when they get out to speed, they're finishing at the, ring, the rim alone. The Dragons have been back on every possession. They've been contesting every single shot and rebound. Mac Annis couldn't hit the three. Preston Jackson Stevens gets the second chance opportunity, and he converts 4-2 Belmont, 5-22 left. Muhammad Ali scoots it over to Mason Lawson. Lawson crosses over, takes it to the left, has a good look at the basket, but can't kiss it off the glass for the finish. Naruzi up with it. Behind the back goes Preston Jackson Stevens, and he's stuck. And again, they're out in space, but there's nowhere to run. Laden's getting back every time. Tianu Santos settles things down for the Dragons. Head fake, nice pass down low. Jump ball is going to be the call. Now the call the correction. PJS there. PJS is going to get the call, unfortunately. First foul of the night. Made it almost halfway through the entirety of the first quarter before a call. So with 4.50 left on the clock in the first quarter, Latin Academy is going to go to the line for two. First one by Wagarian is off, just short. 
Dance filling up on both sides of the court here at Wakefield. You can hear the noise as Wagarian hits the second. Four, three the score. Naruzzi being picked up by Lawson. Has to beat the press over to Logan. Scoots it to Preston Jackson Stevens. Over to Minikazi. Fighting through contact. Can't put it in. PJS up with it. He's fouled on the block. They're going to get number one, Muhammad Ali, with his first one. PJS able to hit the first. And again, it was an offensive rebound there. And, and again, there's going to be a lot of the rim, but they're unable. They're unable to get these putbacks there. There's great defense being played by, on both sides, but by Boston Latin, allowing nothing easy, nothing free by Belmont. PJS converts two for two. Great defense there by PJS on the baseline. 6-3, the score remains. Four minutes, 34 seconds here in the first. Guarding the baseline is Preston. Tianu Santos all the way across to Mason Lawson. He scoots it across half court. Naruzi on him. Abdullahi Aden with the first. There's the three point from the corner by Stubbard. No good. Belmont up with it. PJS's pass is knocked away. It'll stay Belmont basketball. And he didn't see it, but he had Minicosi on the far side open. Tim wanted the ball there. It would have been a nice spot shot. But on the defensive side for Belmont, they are everywhere right now, contesting everything. They're not allowing anyone to get by them. Really good on-ball defense. Checking back into the game for the Dragons is Osasu Wagarian, the center. Preston Jackson Stevens with the lefty runner. No good. Dragons up with it. Both teams moving with speed here in the first as we close the halfway mark. Great take to the basket by Mason Lawson. The crowd up top on the far balcony loves it. Naruzzi right to the rack. Little reverse of his own, can't find the mark. Falls just out. Right rim, left rim, and out. Dragons coming back now. Like to take there a lot, though. Very aggressive by Naruzzi, right where he picked off the ball. Right Mason Boss into the rack. Draws the hoop and the arm as Preston Jackson Stevens is going to get knocked with his second. And you can feel the Dragons have a little bit of momentum as their student section appears to fill up a little bit. That's uh, too early on uh, PJS. That's it's not good for Belmont. He's been really pushing the tempo. And one of the things we've seen from him in this playoffs is he is everywhere in this game on transition, offensively, transition, defensively, playing offense, playing defense. His athleticism is so apparent when you're watching this team. And now he's got to take a seat probably for the remainder of this quarter. Big loss for the Marauders, absolutely as Tyler Shapazian checks into the game for Belmont. Into the game for the Dragons, number four, Benny Martinez. And they're giving Kevin Logan a rest with Arno, and that's one of the things we talked about against Barricka, is the veteran leadership right there with Arno. Great finish there by the senior reserve player off the bench. His first points of the night tie the game. Mason Lawson to Martinez in the corner, takes the baseline, and Arno says no. And his athleticism and his ability, although he doesn't have the height, Kevin Logan does, but you saw right there, he went cross court there with a really, really nice block. Benny Martinez inbounding, finds Muhammad Ali on the post. No basket, ball's knocked around. Belmont basketball. Not sure I agree with that call, but nothing I can do from up here. Absolutely so. Powerless. Arno from the baseline. Feels like we've seen four quarters of action, and we've only seen about seven minutes here in the first. As the Dragon stands in four for defense, and they get it. That's up to a high, excuse me, Abu Ahi Aden on the steal and the hoop. That's the first time I've seen the press work against Belmont this entire postseason. Mac Annis as they try to beat the press to the baseline. Shapazian to Naruzzi, inside to Arno. Great ball movement, Annis. Can't find the mark as Automacus has yet to hit from beyond tonight. 
really, really good ball movement there, good spacing. Long three by Adam, it's good. Scares into the Belmont student section as he hits it 13 to eight, the score in favor of the Dragons, and a kick ball there, and you feel Latin Academy has a little bit of mojo right now. So they were starting, they were having trouble initially driving in, trying to do what they wanted to do. They've adjusted, hitting from the outside, getting to space, and their press has been really effective. Once they got hoops, they're able to press. Active defense as Minikazi rattles in and out for three. You have to know that those Belmont shots will start to fall at some point as Abdullahi takes it to the rack. Odd and no good. Minikazi up with it, and Belmont can move. Mac Annis has it knocked away. Stays Belmont basketball. But what you were talking about, Coach, great recovery defense by Latin Academy. Mason Lawson there sprinted back, and he didn't. Most players, when you when Mac tried to go up and try to jump and block the ball, he stayed low to strip the ball before Mac could even get off the ground. Really, really smart play. Minikazi takes it in, has it knocked away, but it's going to be a foul, I believe, on number four, Benny Martinez. We'll wait for the call. Yes, it is. His first yeah. of the night. And Benny Martinez just did what Lawson did again. They're, they're, I, I actually thought that looked like a clean strip there, but they're going right for the ball. They're trying to attack him low. Belmont really likes to dribble and penetrate, and if you're attacking the ball low, it makes it very difficult to do that. They're trying to take away the drive before the drive even happens. Head coach for the Dragons, Dan Bunker, was up talking to the referee on what he thought was doubtless a clean strip. Dragons faithful able to rattle Minikazi on the second one. 13-9 inside two minutes here in the first. Mason Lawson to Santos, back to Lawson. Annis awaits him at the three-point line. Here's the screen. That's Tianu Santos with a nice little dish. Arno knocks it away. Great play there by Avery. Belmont got caught ball watching a little bit there with a really, really nice cut down the lane. Naruzi with a nice take, but can't finish it. Here comes Aden. Naruzi playing on the back check, can't knock it away. Lawson slips on the crossover, able to kick it over, and the three is good. This kid can shoot. 16-9 the score. Buoyed by back-to-back -back three pointers by Abdullahi Aden. Chapazian can't hit from the corner. Aden with a nice little sportsmanship stare down on the bench after that. Kids a gamer, you can tell early. Lawson's jumper is no good. Foul is called on Muhammad Ali. And we're gonna see Nemo Stufford back into the game for the Dragons. So clear early that Belmont's gonna have to work. Unlike the first two rounds where they were able to keep a tight lead going into the halftime, they find themselves down seven with 48 on the clock in the first. Trap goes into Naruzi and the foul is called. That's gonna be on 14, Mason Lawson. Crowd not enjoying it up where we are. Dragons faithful don't approve of that call, but it's the fourth team foul for Latin Academy. As Naruzi flips it to Minikazi, splits the active defense, kick to Shapazi and over to Mack, fakes the shot, takes it in, easy two. Fundamental basketball. 16-11. 30 seconds remaining, shot clock still on, there's a difference of four. Lawson. Talented junior guard for the Dragons. His flash talent so far tonight. Works away from the Stufford screen, uses the right. Boxing out inside was Minikazi, has it knocked away. Latin keeps coming up with it. Here's the three from Adder, and it's good. Belmont <laughs> having to come back, takes a last second shot, but the shot's no good. So the story of the night thus far is Abdullahi Adin, junior guard for the Latin Academy Dragons, who has nine points, nine of their 19 points here in the first quarter. He hasn't touched rim yet on his shots, and his shots have not been at the arc. They've been one, two, three steps behind the arc, and he's been silky smooth on his release and his shot. He's been unreal, and that was a kind of a roundabout shot clock, uh, end of the quarter ending, ball being kicked around, caught it shut in the quarter, and just absolutely, absolutely netted that one. Unbelievable play. 
19-11 is the count right here as I think Jeremy Meserve is asking some people to push to the left so we can continue to have a shot. We appreciate it. Keep cheering. Uh, you could tell that it was pretty live up here in the first. We got the Dragon Academy student section extended sitting right in front of us. Y'all keep cheering. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Keep cheering, though, for real. Like Y'all are live right now. Keep going. They're down in front of us loving the game, and this is what tournament basketball is all about. 19-11 is the score. Coach, we've been in huddles like this in our own respective sports. What is Coach Pritchard saying down there in the Belmont timeout? Well, we got to he's got to make some adjustments now. Right now, Boston Latimy was able to get the lead and extend the lead when they started hitting shots. And they were able to do that because they were able to do their full court press. And this is the first time I've seen Belmont be pressed effectively. And the other thing is when they get over half court, they're doing a two-man trap up top. They're not allowing any threes. They're allowing some tries, but Belmont's not finishing at the rim. We have to see the adjustments Pritchard makes right now. You can tell that this Dragons team is a team that really enjoys playing defense. As Minakazi finishes around the hoop, makes it 19-13. We do know that this is a disciplined and fundamentally rooted Belmont basketball team, so by no means are they out of oh. it or shook as Preston Jackson-Stevens is on a knee at the scorer's table for the second quarter. The other thing is we haven't seen it really since Reading. When they get shooting, they're... Yeah. Unbelievable, they're unbeatable, and that can change the game. And then you have to start pressing them and worrying about the threes, and that gives up the center, and you can't trap as much. Tiano Santos couldn't find the mark for the Dragons. Arno over to Minikazi. Minikazi to Annis. Annis picked up by Lawson, flips it to Naruzi. Naruzi taking his time. Chapazi in now. Motion screens up top. Minikazi. Nine on the clock, little dribble inside, he slips, the floor seems to be a little bit slick, they're on the floor, jump ball seems to be the call, Dragons basketball. I think, I think uh, Tim was trying to call for time out there, couldn't quite get to and get his hand off the ball. But yeah, it's, uh, we've seen a couple players now slip on yeah, this floor. Well, Mason already. slipped twice over yeah. on this end, excuse my hand if it was in there, working uh, right to left on the left side. And we just see Minikazi slip right there, working left to right on the right side of the floor. So here's Lawson, steps back behind the line for three, no good. PJS is up with it, nice board there for Belmont. Minikazi, Naruzi is gonna get called for the travel there. Naruzi had really, really good on-ball defense on Lawson on the last possession. When you step back and hit that, if that had gone in, you would just throw your hands up and you're like, uh-oh, it's not the night for Belmont. Good defense by Naruse, forced the miss there. Here's Lawson, works into the Belmont trap and it's successful, Mac Annis is up with it. Pushes to Minikazi, now to Arno. Arno down inside, over to Naruse, to Mac Annis. And a jumping Betty Martinez goes down over the top of Mac Annis on a great head fake as they were certainly ready for Mac to shoot. And that was his second and we saw that all started with the trap defense doing to what uh, BLA, what Latin Academy has been doing to Belmont, and it was effective, and, it's, and now you have PJS in there, you're increasing the athleticism and the wingspan and the size. Nemo Stuppard back into the game, the senior forward, as PJS takes it down low, he's gonna draw a foul on the floor. And they're gonna give it to number 21, Osasu Wogherian. Wogherian. That's the sixth foul. We're now in the bonus situation. Next time they get a foul, and the reaching in, which was disruptive early, is now going against the Dragons. And Belmont, a good free throw shooting team, as Lawson is called for the foul there, and he is emotional as he walks back towards his bench. That's going to be the one-on-one -on -one situation we were just talking about. And now, with this much time, six minutes left. Here it is, yeah. It looks like yep. they were doing one left. There's six minutes left in the first half now. Now Boston Line of the Academy might have to change their defensive approach a little bit. Their hands were disrupted early. They've gotten called with, and I'll be honest, ticky tack fouls the last minute or so. And now they're in foul trouble. They have a couple of their star players with two fouls now. And they have to start adjusting. And this might open up some more offensive opportunities and drives for Belmont. Definitely some tough calls, but active hands by the Dragons. We'll see if Coach Bunker has to adjust that approach a little bit here. 
6.05 left in the second quarter as Kevin Logan checks back into the game. Minikazi, two for two. And a great five minutes just there by Avery Arno, who is unbelievably defensively and just really, really added athleticism to those last five minutes. Odden for three, he's been hot. Can't find the mark there. That would have been four for four. Instead, he's just three for four. Minikazi over to Annis. Thinks about one of his own, takes it to the stripe and pulls up from there, no good. Ball's bouncing around down on the block, and here comes on it. Kicks it over, and a nice little dipsy doodle there by number two up, up, excuse me, number three, Tiano Santos. Santos now guarding the Ruzzi. Over to Preston Jackson Stevens. Nifty move there by PJS, and he finishes the runner in traffic. And now they're starting to attack the paint with effectiveness which will open up the outside for them. 21 to 17 the scores. This is what Hyren down low that he most suffered and he finishes. Losing just a fraction late there on that adjustment. Minikazi loses the handle but fortuitously over to PJS, he can't finish. Active hands down low by Belmont, the Dragons are coming back. Tiamu Santos kicks it out. Adden steps to his left, puts up the three, can't finish. Naruzzi. Scoops it up and over to Preston Jackson. Stevens kicks it to Mack, and Mack puts it in the hoop and the foul. He'll be going to the line for the continuation. Chance to make it a one possession game. I missed the number there. Sure, we can get it at halftime. We'll get all our fouls squared away at halftime. But uh, it was almost sloppy play on both sides there, and then Pokey was saying, come on, I need to slow this down. But again, they've been here before. They're, they're savvy, the veteran, and they figured it out, and they won that kind of back and forth slot fest just there for three-point play. From the corner is Aden, fakes the shot, and then comes down the baseline, drew a little contact down there, so he'll likely go to the stripe. You, you kind of wonder, is Belmont going to adjust their kind of run and gun approach? It doesn't really seem like it. It's been their bread and butter all season long. In the first quarter though, their defense was stout. They were on ball defense. They weren't letting people buy them. They weren't lunging at players. It was one and one all over the court. The last four possessions, if you watch and go back and look, Belmont's running at guys. They're out of position. They're in bad spots. They're allowing open looks. They have three guys converging on the ball, which allows other people open. They're not playing fundamental team defense right now. Abdullahi Aden goes two from the stripe, makes it 25 to 20. PJS goes right to the block. Nice take. Can't get the finish, but he'll go to the line for two, so we start trading free throws a little bit here. Foul there, I believe, was called on 21, Osasu Waghairan. That's nine on the team to just three for Belmont. The aggressiveness of Boston Latin Academy, which was so effective early on, again, as I was just been talking about, is starting to come back and hop them a little, and now we're at a four-point game with PJS to make it a three-point game. And again, a good free-throw shooting team is Belmont as PJS hits them both. 25 to 22. Four minutes and 24 seconds remain in what has been a fast-paced tournament basketball game. Benny Martinez with the runner, no good. Presto up with it, he'll bring it back. Latin Academy recovers well. Annis over to Neruzzi. Tries to push it over, has it knocked away. Joe Carey into the game and up with it. Presto, swarming are the Dragons. And a traveling violation called on PJS on the sideline. A wry smile from him as he walks back up with the crowd in his face. I love how Coach Pritchard saw this was going to start to be a little slugfest, getting a little sloppy. And so who do I want in that game? I want Joe Carey in that game. <laughs> Joe Carey just finds a way to get loose balls, to aggravate offensive players. will be all over the court now. Foul on the Rusey. And again, no relation to Harry Carey as Tianu Santos threw the foul there. That's Naruzzi's first of the night. Foul was on the floor. Only the fourth team foul for Belmont. Here's the three-pointer, no good. That was Tianu Santos again as carries up with it. Over to PJS, shoots from the wing, no good. Strong rebound by Logan, tied up, jump ball, should be Belmont ball. So 
that'll flip the arrow, but a nice board there by Kevin Logan. And P.J. has kind of a little off balance, but I've seen him hit that shot 100 times this year, where it's just, it's in transition, it's a quick, and you're just getting that off. I, I like that. I like the aggressiveness there. Got to keep shooting the shots you've been shooting all year to get you here. You know these guys can hit these shots. They just got to make it happen. It's a big game. Nerves are settling down. Three minutes and 30 seconds in the second quarter. Minikazi back into the game for Belmont as Mac Annis takes a seat. Minikazi handles. Nice take in there and draws the contact down low. Back to the stripe. He goes. So free throws and fouls seem to be the story of the Belmont offense here late in the second quarter. And that's going to be three and one here and now. And now... Some of these starters, some of these, these really good players on Barcelona Academy are going to have to either be less aggressive or when Karen now comes out of the game, or they're going to have to sit for a little while. And that's going to play in when you get into the benches and the depth. We've talked about all playoffs. When you have, you have captains and you have senior leaders coming off the bench for Belmont, that's a huge advantage now. That's going to bring into the game number 23, Brennan Shapiro. Replacing Wagarian at center. Wagarian a sophomore. Brendan Shapiro, a freshman. Yeah, I was looking at this roster, not a lot of seniors. The big man future is bright for the Dragons. First action of the night for Shapiro. Here's Aden for three. It's good. This kid can shoot. Just the way he released that, I thought there was in the whole time. The last two, he didn't follow through. They seemed a little rush. That was, he was just. That was just in his rhythm. That was in his wheelhouse. Nice shot. Shooting with confidence is Abdullahi Adin. Arno pass is tipped away. Here's Santos. Santos with the right. Can't finish. But in numbers are the Dragons as Nemo Stuckard puts it back. Seven point spread. Minikazi. Over to Shapazi. Now Naruzi. Minikazi settling now is Belmont. Uses the Logan screen. One on one on Benny Martinez. Logan tips it back to Minikazi. Takes it inside, tries to draw the contact. Cannot, Shapazian thinks about the shot, passes it up, kicks it out. Logan now, his pass is knocked away. I think mean, Coach Pritchard was trying to get Mac some rest there, but you need his presence in there. You can see without him, they're not as self-assured. A uh, little more sloppy with the ball. Back in, uh, PJS back in the game. This is the lineup that Belmont has the advantage on. Starters on the floor and the travel violation called on Preston. That's his second in the first half. Thought Chapazian could have shot that one from the top of the key, too. I actually thought he was lucky. He almost got a travel there, but they've been calling that very early on Belmont tonight. That's three travels so far. So needing to button things up a little bit are the Marauders, but certainly not out of it yet as Santos shakes and bait, gets his own rebound, and is fouled by Arno, I believe. It is going to be Avery Arno. And Arno's been everywhere since he's checked in. Again, he was on that last break. He's down low. He's a very fast, good recovery. But he needs some help down there. They need help on the rebound. So they're getting out-rebounded on this side extensively by, Bum uh, by uh, Boston Addy. To the line for two goes Santos. He hits the first. Second one rattles in and up. Naruzi up with it. Minikazi just inside two minutes as the trap comes over. Minikazi has to fight to get rid of it. Naruzi, PJS. Latin Dragons continue to swarm defensively. Belmont looking for a scene. Mac Annis takes it inside over to PJS, steps to his right, Minikazi for three, it's good! They needed that in a real bad way to throw the momentum a little. Again, Minikazi is shot going. That was a big time hit for him. A reminder that this Marauders team can shoot. Abdulhai Aden, nifty move with the left and finishes with the touch. Answering right back. PJS, one minute, 15 seconds. The Dragons fans are up. PJS looks to Annis, says no. Arno up top. Preston for three. It's good. 33 to 29. The lead is shrunk to four. Now they're going to start finding their stroke. It's a game again. It's a game again, Q. 
Abdullahi Aden has been the story for the Dragons. The junior guard has been lights out. Jump ball. That's going to stay Boston Lada, but we're changing the possession era. And Mack's defense on him has been very, very strong. Aden's just having himself a game right now. Belmont student section finding their juice a little bit. Aden takes it down low, has it knocked away. Minikazi takes it right to the hole and is rejected by Nemo Stubbard, but it stays Belmont ball. Recovery defense, the story of the Dragons coming back up the court. And they've been with them. You can't outrun Boston Lionel Academy. They've been unable to outrun them, and we haven't seen that this playoffs. Belmont's Long. been able to outrun everyone. Absolutely. First time they've met somebody who can really run with them. 28 seconds, Preston Jackson, Stevens to the hole. Nice lefty layup, but it rattles out. Shapiro with the ball. Here's Martinez. He'll slow things down, and it appears the Dragons will hold for last shot, I would assume. 13, Martinez handling. Anis on him. A little bit slippery as he turns Anis around, pushes him off with the right, and it's going back Belmont way as they called Martinez with the right-handed push. That was a good call, Coach. It was. I saw it was, but actually, the only problem with that call happened a second too late. Yeah. So you shaped about half a second off that call, but that was a very obvious push off. And Five, then the travel. And then the travel. And then the miss. 5.1 5. seconds remaining. 33 to 29. Here comes Logan. Two, one. He'll shoot the running three. No good. 33 to 29. So the Boston Latin Academy Dragons come out absolutely firing. Absolutely running up and down the floor. Outland Belmont, I would say, for the majority of the first half. Got Abdullahi Aden shooting lights out. Four threes in the first half. But the good news for Belmont is despite a sloppy half of basketball for them, it's a four-point deficit. That's the good news. Yep, four points is good. But the last time we saw a team stay with Belmont in this capacity was Tech Boston in the Garden yep. last year. And I would say the bad news for Belmont is... I don't think this is a fluke. No. We, we saw the third quarter, they outscored uh, at 33-17 in round one, they outscored Redding. They outscored 28-11, they outscored Bill Ricca. I see the third quarter being neck and neck. I don't see Belmont getting that advantage. Boston Wadden is not afraid to run with them. They're back with them on everything. And, and I actually think right now with those last two threes, Belmont's lucky to be down four right now. I mean, we've talked a lot over the course of the first two games that we've called here in this bracket that one of the aspects of this Belmont team that's just so difficult to deal with is the fact that as soon as the ball drops through the basket, even if you score, Belmont's back in the other direction. This team, ball's through the basket, you're running back the other way, and the Dragons are right there with you every step. So Belmont's either going to have to find another gear or they're going to have to do things a little bit different here. In a way, it's almost disadvantaged them for two reasons. One, we talked about part of their defense is rattling the offense when they shoot because they're so worked. Obviously, not the case tonight. And the other thing is when when Belmont's pressing and they're trying to get to the rack, that's when Boston Lionel Academy, where they have eight blocks, yep. four steals. Have they, they finished one? I remember Mac finishing the layup, but like, they're unable to finish in transition because Boston Latham is back there and they're able to get, they know exactly what Belmont's trying to do. It's been unbelievable defense and I really, really worry how is that going to play out for the rest of this game? Coach Pritchard, are you going to slow things down now? Are right. you going to work for your threes? Are you going to try to run some offense to get Mac off screens, to get Timmy off screens, to get Preston off screens? What's the uh, changeup going to be? Because they need to make adjustments now. Well, Coach Pritch, master tactician is he. They're in the locker room right now. I'm sure he's drawing it up, getting these boys ready to go. We're going to take a short break here. we got seven minutes and 40 on the halftime clock. Coach Streit's going to go get himself a slice of pizza or something of the like. And we'll be back for the second half of this Belmont tournament basketball game on the BHS Sports TV Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at Wakefield Memorial High School here in Wakefield, Massachusetts for the second half of this Division II North MIAA Boys Basketball State Tournament Sweet 16 bracket game. Belmont trailing the Latin Academy Dragons by four as we're loading up to begin the third quarter. Coach, foul trouble a little bit, the story for the Dragons. Adjustments may be on board. What do you think we're going to see here? Well, I didn't really see any adjustments out of the end of the second half by the Dragons. They were as aggressive as ever. 
But you have Wahirin, Lawson, Martinez all with three, Ali with two. But what's good is, as, as crazy as that second quarter was, Beaumont won that second quarter 18 to 14 to cut down the original first quarter lead, trailing only four at halftime. Keanu Santos was up on Naruzzi. He's over to Logan, thinks about the three, hands it off to Annis. Annis steps up to shoot. He hits. Well, he's going to get that going. Things will change very, very quickly in this arena. Automakis with a little bit of a statement shot to begin the third quarter. Here comes Aden. He was the story of the first half. His drive is no good. Knocked away by PJS as he moves with speed behind the back. The finish, no. And up with it is Santos. I think I would have spontaneously eviscerated. <laughs> I would have sublimed up into what have you. Oh my lord, was that sweet. But you gotta finish that. You're gonna pull that move, you gotta finish that. Drawing into the Jesse Jackson vocabulary. It's Coach Strite. I like it. <laughs> the good reverend. Here's Mason Lawson now. Over to Santos, back to Lawson. Lawson waiting for the screen from Wogirin. There's the pick and roll, like you draw it up. Nice slip screen there by Wogirin. Really, really nice job. Fundamental basketball by the Dragons. It's a three-point lead for them. Naruzzi being hassled by Santos. I'll tell you what, Naruzzi's got to watch that left hand. It was the last few possessions, a little bit of a push-off on Santos there. Minikazi to PJS, back to Minikazi, Naruzzi. Deep three for Minikazi is good. Don't look now, but that's a tie ball game. And that's what we said. We said, look, Boston Line Academy is doing everything right. We're worried about the inability of Belmont to run. But they can still shoot, coach. Santos now for Latin Academy. Over to Aden, trying to answer the Minikazi three. And they're going to say that he was fouled on the shot by Annis, and that's going to put Abdullahi Aden on the line for three shots. I'm not sure about the contact after that. I was watching the release and, and what happened there. I didn't see the, the if, if Matt came down on him or not. But I will say, on the last two, I bit my tongue. Aden did get fouled on his threes. So hard to get mad here because he was on at least one, maybe two. First is good for Abdullahi Aden, 36-35 the score. Second one, up and good as well. What's and interesting, that one in, and you can tell by his reaction, he didn't like it. It bounced around a little, what's it? I bet this one goes right, this is so confusing. This young so man is offended it. when his shot touches the rim. Yeah, watch this, nothing but net. Oh, Whoa. shorts it on the third one. That's on me. That is, he jinxed him. But we're not worried. We know number two can shoot. He's been doing it all night. Minikazi hands it off to Naruzzi. Naruzzi being picked up by Santos. He's been persistent in his defense, to say the least. His defense has been unreal this half, Santos has. Annis kicks it back to Logan. Takes it inside, Minikazi for three. It's good. He is feeling it now, Q. He is feeling it. He started to turn as soon as he released that. Two feet behind the line, not even a thing. Tim catch and shoot, Minikazi, oh, if Kevin Kevin the lead, as big Kevin Logan with the steal and the dish. The Belmont student section is up as they stretch their lead, first lead of the night to three. Coach Parker may want to call a T.O. here, just say it. Little bit of juice in the house for the Marauders as Santos gets tied up. They're going to call the foul on the floor on Hannes. Second for Automakis. He didn't like it, but he's bumping him the whole way on the drive. His feet are moving. That's a foul, Coach. Here's that timeout that you were talking about as Coach Bunker brings his team to the side. So you get the sense, and I was thinking about this honestly on my drive over here tonight, Coach, that in both of the first two rounds that I saw, I saw a Belmont team that, shall we say, bided its time in the first half. They played fast, and they chucked it up, but they bided their time, and then all of a sudden, we see this explosion in the third quarter. Are we seeing that boulder getting rolling here, or is this Dragon team too good to let that happen, and we're in a tight back and forth game? I'll check my crystal ball real you gotta quick. You got to look, man. I'm putting you on the spot. I would say I'm surprised. They've started this quarter in the first um, two and a half minutes, outscoring 11-4. This is coming off of three huge three-pointers, one yep. by Mac, two by Minikosi. Um, 
but it isn't the typical, it doesn't feel like BLA is feeling suffocated. What we saw with Red and what we saw with Colwicka was they were just totally outmatched in that third quarter. We talked about the scores, 33-17, 28-11. I don't see that happening here, but then again, it's an 11-4 to start. Um, I would be very surprised if Belmont blew the doors open here. I just think Boston Line is too good. Uh, they're too athletic, they're too fast. They're not gonna get one out of this gym. That's what the crystal ball says. The crystal ball says, Latin Academy staying in this game. Has good defense on the inbound. Minikazi to Annis, off the glass. That's good for two, 42 to 37. I'll keep saying that because I'll be okay to miss myself. I mean, I'll be fine if I was wrong. We are a hometown broadcast. I want to be honest. We have a team we want to win, but we try to call it as impartially as we can as Lawson can't find the mark. And it's to Neruzzi as Belmont starts to fly. Strong take by Neruzzi. Draws the contact. No call. BLA is up with it. Hodden with the nice dish. Has it knocked away? And they're going to call a traveling violation on Minikazi as he passed the ball off the floor. Interesting. I guess they're saying he fell to the floor with possession, which is a travel. I'm not sure I saw it that way. I thought that was loose down there on the That's what I was thinking. Belmont defense has a little of something to it as they're going to call Lawson with the offensive foul on the push-off. Shades of your dimmy in there. Yep. A little bit the, the school of dramatic acting, the Danny Yardimi at school of dramatic acting. With Mac, we've seen Max stay in people's faces through contact. And he got blown out of the gym there. Me thinks he pushed off himself a little bit. <laughs> me thinks thou doth protest I too much. Do. Kevin Logan. And I'm standing right across the gym with Yardimi who was applauding that, uh, that savvy move by Mac Annis. Here's Kevin Logan now working off of the PJS screen. Loses the handle. Mack fighting to get it back. They go to the floor. Santos. Santos kicks it over to Auden. Steps to his left. Three-pointers no good. Minikazi up with the board. Has to throw it over to Neruzzi. He loops around. Interesting path to half court, but whatever gets you there. Preston Jackson. Stevens catch and shoot. In and out. Logan with the offensive board. Second chance no good. Third time's no good for the Irishman. Fourth time's no good. Got a finish there, Kevin Logan, as Mac Annis steals for three. That's no good. Preston Jackson Stevens gets called for over the back, and it's going to go back the other way. I'll give, you, I'll give you a spell right now, Coach. That's the Thank third you. of PJS. we got to watch that. I mean, there's four minutes left. We're halfway through the third quarter, then you have the fourth quarter. But three fouls. You need PJS in this game playing aggressive at the end. Better hope he doesn't get the fourth flat foul in that third quarter. You back now? I'm back. I'm back. That was a lot. Would have liked to see the big fella finish, but Mac Annis steals. He's going to go right to the rack, looking for contact, no call, as it's projected on essentially the back check. Timo Santos with a nice take. He has it knocked away by Logan, but they're going to call the foul on Big 42, and that's the first on the night for him. 42-37 the score. And again, it's it's... You know, when I looked at my crystal ball, I didn't see this. Um, but Belmont's inability to finish on breakaways, on uh, on steals, that's the difference that's there. It. Those are six extra points that you have against Kovic and that you have against Reddick. And that's the kind of the difference all game where, where Belmont just kind of closes you out and just buries you with their athleticism and speed. They're getting the turnovers, but the turnovers aren't resulting in points. First free throw from Tiano Santos is good. Second one not. Preston Jackson Stevens can't come up with the board or the box out. Very quickly on the three-point play. 42 to 40. Minikazi. Back to Neruzzi calling signals. Tiano Santos up on him. PJS, they collide. Traveling violation. Yeah. And I'm actually, I'm loving what Santos is bringing to, to, this, to this game right now in terms of the You like those aggressive I intense just, defenders. I mean, you like the Cicciotti kid from Bill I love I love, Carey, I yep. love guys who, they might be good offensively. Not everybody can play offensive, but it takes will, effort, and intensity to play defense. When you have that drive inside, anybody can do it. Santos is doing it well. 
Defense turns into points for Jackson Stevens as the head fake and then the basket makes it a four point lead. Martinez is trapped, fights it over. Coach Pritchett begging for a double dribble, calls, not going to get it. Here's Tiano Santos, uses the screen, fighting to the rack, has it knocked away, and they're going to call a foul there. He's drawing the contact, but I got to say, it's not something that I'm seeing going the other way, is they're going to call that foul on Naruzi. So that was, that's actually a big call there because Mack was in the mix there, and that would have been three for Mack. This corner, three for the game, but Naruzi gets it. But yeah, now it's getting kind of chippy on both sides. We're not seeing the same calls against Boston Loud Academy we saw in the first half. In fact, we're seeing those calls against Belmont. Absolutely. And again, really speaking to the point that in the, in the first two rounds, you didn't have this aggressive defense against the break back that you have. And, and I agree with you, Coach. I think that's really the difference between what were, you know, expansive runs in the third and the fact that we're looking at a four-point game as Santos can't find the mark on either and Belmont catches a break there. Naruzzi pulls up, wheeling around the half-court line. Annis fighting through the contact. They're going to call an offensive foul on him. And that's his third. And that... I mean, that's big. That is a huge play, and that's Santos creating that. And Santos was in perfect positioning. He does what we've seen Mac do, what Danny's done in the past. If you're in positioning, you take the charge, you flop back. But he earned it by being there, being set. He is setting the tone right now as much as um, Auden's doing it offensively. He's setting the tone defensively for Boston Laden. Only a junior is Santos. That was Martinez with the board after the baseline look for the Dragons. Back up with it is Santos. Tianu Santos has been the catalyst for the Dragons thus far in the third. Behind the back, loses the handle, Naruzzi up with it. Pulls it back to avoid the tight defense, finds Minikazi in space, and he's got a lot of it. Takes it in, takes a little run and shot, catches the roll, 46-40. That was a self-assist there by Tim, where he started going so hard that the Boston Atlantic Latin Academy defense sagged, which allowed that little open jumper for him. Great. He put his head down and he pulled everybody As he goes, take the space that's there. As Abdullahi Aden gets called for the travel there, and he's been quiet thus far in this third quarter. Big difference. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been, they haven't scored a lot, but it's been the story of Santos, not Aden. Preston Jackson Stevens, nice job there to beat the press by the Marauders. Easy look inside to Arno, can't finish, needs to. Minikazi lucky to come up with it. Mack with a good look for three, and it's good. Autumn Mack has not missed that shot. 49 to 40 with 121 left, and the Marauders are threatening a double digit lead. And this is the first time I've seen this emotion from Mack this playoffs where he let it hang up there, and he started to really, really pound his chest and let people know that fired up. They're starting to match the intensity. They're bringing up that intensity that Boston Latin's uh, bringing. They need to do that. And I'm telling you, I watched him just walk over to that huddle, and he walks in there and goes, give me the ball. Give me the ball. I don't want to see silent assassins right now. I want, no, them, sir. I want them up and aggressive. I want them matching the intensity. And right now, they, they took a full point deficit to a nine-point lead, a 13-point swing right now. They're outscoring 21. Well, that can't be right. Sorry, reading the wrong score. <laughs> 20 to 7, they're outscoring Boston Loud Academy here in the third. It's been a heck of an answer for the Marauders here in the third. We're going to get a really good look here at, at kind of what Latin Academy's response to this is because they're a 19 and 14. They won convincingly, like Belmont, in the first two rounds. They're a two seed above Belmont. If you look at their season wins, most of them were pretty convincing season wins. So this is a team that's had a lot of success. And they've done something that in the last few years Belmont hasn't been able to, and that's beat Tech Boston. Yep. And Tech Boston, uh, Belmont lost it twice last year, most notably in the, uh, in the Garden in the state semifinals. Boston Loud Academy and went one and two against them this year. I mean, seeing that, you know these guys can ball, and you know they're not going to go away. Latin Academy beat North Andover in the first round, Gloucester in the second. That's Muhammad Ali, can't find it. And Minikazi comes up with it. Winner of these two teams will see Beverly at the Songus. Maruzzi 
has it taken away. Santos with a nifty take, but he can't finish. Coming from behind is Arno, he'll draw the foul. That's a good foul there by Avery. And that's actually an unbelievable play by Ali, who jumped Naruzi. Naruzi tried to swing it over to Minikazi, and Ali was right there, blocked it and pushed it the other way. Muhammad Ali at the line. Junior forward for the Latin Academy Dragons. 49 to 40, 55.6 seconds remain as Ali is good with the first one. Mac Annis stands around half court next to Abdullahi Aden. A lot of shooting standing around the center circle as the second one from Ali is short and Minikazi with a strong board. I'll tell you what, Boston Latin Academy has not been hitting their free throws this half right now. And that's been a big, it's been a factor. It has been. a big factor, but a factor. Points on the table, it's an eight point game. Preston Jackson, Stevens over to Arno. Arno looks inside the PJS as he flashes back out. He'll try to take the baseline there and the foul's gonna be called on the floor. Looks like number five, Nemo Stuffer. I just want to say that Finding Nemo is probably one of my favorite movies on the planet, and I have not made one Finding Nemo reference, but the night is still relatively young. Spelled differently, maybe it's Nemo. Uh, could be. <laughs> Minikazi draws contact on the, on the block, heading towards the block. Good afternoon, we're gonna have a great jump today. Let's not stubborn again, now he's drawn two in back-to-back -back possessions. Avery Arno standing on the baseline to inbound for the Marauders with just under 30 seconds left on the clock. No five second call there as he's able to get it to Annis. Dude, that's cornerback boys in the pocket right yeah. there. He's just waiting and waiting and waiting and then he found his tight end in the back of the end zone. C, the ball, B, the ball. Matt Annis. Nice dish to Naruzi in the corner, shots up, no good. Preston fighting for the offensive board. They'll go to the floor, able to get it out is Ali. Ali to Aden, Aden to the rack, rising is Minikazi. And a last second basket for Latin Academy makes it 49 to 43. So, a solid answer by the Belmont Marauders in this situation here. They took a lot of punches in the first two quarters. They won the second quarter, close one, right? Chopped down the lead a little bit. Came back and threw punches there in the third. I mean, talk to me a little bit about the resilience of this Belmont basketball team. So, I mean, I guess 20 to 10, I have to take a loss on this. That's a, that's a, the screen door got blown open there. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, that's, again, their, their third quarter now, it, it's, you know, we could do the math, that's 16 points plus, uh, this is great television, 16 math points plus 11. Uh, gets us a 33. They've outscored their opponents 43 points in the third quarter in these playoffs, and that's what they do. Um, I don't know. We've seen Aden go away there. I'm not quite sure what has happened differently defensively. I have to, I have to be a little more um, locked in to see what I'm, what's going on defensively, but they're not pushing the ball as much. Yep. They're hitting their shots. They're making smarter, more reserved, kind of patient decisions. And they're just playing good basketball. And we're going to see something here, which we haven't seen in these first two rounds, because Belmont hasn't had to do it, which is finish. Yes. Right? I mean, finish in a tight one. Not, not finish in a blowout, which they definitely did. They didn't step off the gas or allow anybody back in, but to finish in the tight one. I'm, I'm not worried about their conditioning, but, but these starters haven't played four full quarters yet. Yep. They've been out by halfway through the fourth quarter. Aden. Picks his dribble up at the top of the key and gives it over to Ali, to Martinez, back to Aden. Naruzi on him. Kicks it to the corner, that's Nemo Stuppert on Preston Jackson Stevens. Getting his own rebound is Stuppert. And it's a two possession lead for the Marauders. And BLA's been all over the glass all night. Just tenacious down low. But not with a lot of size. They're just very aggressive and they're speed and quick and they're just grabbing the ball. This is a good young Dragons Academy team. Minikazi to Jackson Stevens. Head fake, pulls it up. Steps back, takes the shot. No good. Martinez up with it. Over to Aden. One minute gone in the fourth quarter. 
That's T, excuse me, Tiano Santos can't find the mark. Big save by Naruzzi over to Arno. Arno to Minikazi, back to Naruzzi, back to Minikazi, and he'll settle it down. And Santos went right after Mac, trying to get Mac's fourth foul of the night. And he's a smart kid, he's tenacious, and that's He's that's in a little bit of pain that. right now, too, Coach. I'm just watching him, he's gripping the back of that left knee. He was a little bit limpy as he tried to get up on Naruzzi. Gonna have to see how that plays out. Preston Jackson Stevens steps right, three points. Goldfish memory, Coach, goldfish memory. Goldfish memory. I love the fishes because they're so delicious. It's odd and answers back. Back and forth we go in what has been an exciting fourth quarter thus far. Six minutes and 10 seconds. Belmont leads by five. Preston Jackson Stevens is the Dragon fans imploring their BLA Dragons to play defense here. Belmont student section answering back. Preston Jackson Stevens head fake in the drive, looking for help, finds Narizzi, pushes it over to Minikazi, has it knocked away. Falls in the air and up with it is Boston Latin Academy. That's Muhammad Ali, who's able to find Tiano Santos. Santos right to the rack, he goes, can't finish. Nemo stuppered with the board twice, draws the contact on the third attempt, and that'll take him to the line. That's gonna be on Narusi, that's gonna be his third. Third foul on Ali Narusi. And you see Tiano Santos, working over to Coach Bunker, and he is definitely hobbled. Don't like to see that. That's never a way you want to see a no. high school player in a big game. Uh, he's been a great player for the Dragons all night. And you see the trainer getting a look at him, but he, he's been a little bit of their defensive motor as well, too. And now in the, in the fourth quarter, he's been in the offensive motor. He he's has. just been attacking, and, and you know he's the engine right now that's driving this team. We have, uh, it's interesting about Boston Line Academy and that third quarter is they were entering it with some foul concerns and Bulgarian no fouls Betty Martinez no fouls no in the fouls. second half entering the second half with three each lost in the lone uh, foul in that group he's at four and now Belmont starting to creep in a little bit of foul trouble yep. 539 left you know PJS has three uh, Mac has three uh, Naruzzi has three now and you're just going to kind of monitor that they're not it's not critical level yet no. but it can absolutely change what happens down the stretch, especially if perhaps this game goes further than four quarters. They're certainly staring at the double bonus. I mean, they got nine right now, so that's going to be a reality, too. There's a lot of time left in this basketball game to be sending people to the stripe for two. And speaking of going to the stripe, Nemo Stumpert's going to step up. Good name. Good name. We're getting, we're getting out named hard. That's hard. First one from Nemo is good. Second one up. And Nemo finds peace outside the anemone. As Preston Jackson Stevens confronts the trap. Bounce pass to Arno. Back to PJS. He's going to have to move it. Finds the loser. Back to PJS who settles. Stubborn on him. Great selfless press break there. Good ball movement. Belmont has always been good at that as Anders over to Presto. Presto thinks about the baseline. Going to the floor is Minikazi. He throws it away. And I believe we're going to see Dragon basketball. We're waiting. We've got a little bit of traffic in front of us right now. You're going to have to forgive us. It's all right. I'm going to calm our director down. Timeout called. It looks like it's going to stay Belmont basketball. So what they're saying is as soon as Timmy hit the ground, Coach Pritchard called timeout, timeout before he threw it out of bounds. All right. Coach Bunker does not think that was the case. It's a timely call by Coach Pritchard. That Time was the call. explanation that was provided by the official, intercepted by Coach Strife with his rabbit ears that as Minikazi was going to the ground with possession, Coach Pritch hit the tee, got the timeout. That's actually it's a heady call. It's a huge possession, it's a huge save, but we'll see how it plays out. There's only five seconds left in the shot clock. So Coach Pritch has got a, a harness his inner Brad Stevens. We're coming out of a timeout. We need a shot in the next five seconds. 
And, you know, Boston Latin Academy, their first 10 seconds of a possession, their defense has been locked. Yep. And Belmont's getting the shots when they're moving and they're swinging the ball. And Absolutely. they're eventually wearing down BLA. This is going to be, you know, I hope we have something good here. This is going to be tough, though, for uh, Belmont. Avery Arno, quarterback in the fall, of course, to inbound. Finds Annis as he shoots. Thought he was contacted there. No call. Stuffer. Nice little dribble there. Finds Clark. 52 to 51. Thought Mack might have took a little body contact on that shot. Minikazi has an open look. Thought about the three. Goes to the rack and spin. Nice take by Tip. 54-51. Mack definitely thought he got some body contact there, and he was letting the officials know on the way down. Nemo Stupper working off of the Wogheran screen. Takes it with the right and has it knocked away by Minikazi. No, 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 says Tim. I've seen Mack shoot a lot of crazy shots, a lot of good shots I've never seen him there about before. Naruzi gets caught up in the dribble as PJS knocks it away from Lawson. So active hands on all parties. PJS doing a loss of what was done to him so many times in the first quarter. It's instead of going up to try to block the glory block, you're going, you're hitting right before the ball leaves the waist. Great play. 54 to 51. Four minutes and 20 seconds as Ott is knocked down the three to tie the game, and the place is locked. Here's Preston Jackson Stevens as we fight to work through the crowd. So apologies, but it is an active game here tonight. PJS looking inside to Annis, gets it to him. Back to Preston, 13 on the shot clock. Takes the drive with the left hand, draws the contact, and he'll be going to the line. Putting my radio skills to work here, as I'm going to have to narrate. And again, you cannot fault these young people for being excited about this game. I actually thought PJS on that slip. He's slipping to the same spot we saw Lawson slip. We, I mean, it's a slippery court tonight. And as he was going, he just kind of rolled it up. And they called it. We'll take it. Big free throw from Presto to give Belmont the one-point lead as the junior, Southpaw. One of the things you worry about is Auden, Auden disappeared a little bit in that third. If he's back in the fourth, that could be dangerous for Belmont. A lot of dangerous players on the floor here as the second one from PJS is no good. Auden for three. In and out. He rushed that. that. Preston Jackson Stevens down. Crosses back on Martinez, kicks it over to Arno. Arno to PJS, being hassled by Santos. Great drive by Preston, and he finishes. 57-54. Big time play. And he's going from the shooter's right wing to the left. That's where he's finishing strong. He wasn't doing that early on in the first quarter. He's getting where he needs to be. Mason Lawson can't finish. Mac now employing his teammates. Where are you? Yep. I'm playing defense. I'm getting a block. I can't have my man get the rebound and the putback uncontested. Where's the team defense right now? It's going to take a team effort here in order to win this game. 57 to 56. Belmont nursing a one point lead. Three minutes and nine seconds remaining here. I mean, you got the sentiment that this is going to be uh, going all the way down to the wire. Yeah, here tonight. And, and I. I mean, even though they, they, they opened up that lead in the third quarter, we had talked about it, and we knew this Fossil Light Academy team is for real right now. Yes. And as we kind of look at the bracket, the bracket so far in the D2 North has been total chalk. What I mean by that is the high seed has won every game. We have the number one seed, Beverly, advancing to the Songus on Saturday. And right now, Boston Light Academy, the two seed, hosting Belmont, the three seed, this would be, they're in danger of having the first upset. This is a really, really strong bracket with the top teams executing so far. And, you know, we had one, two, three, four in the D2 World Semis. And I'll tell you, Latin Academy and Belmont Academy might have different numbers of wins, but they have the same number of losses, right? So Belmont played three fewer games. That's with a one-point lead. Arno moves down the baseline and inbounds. Over to Minikazi. Long cross pass to Annis. Annis over to Neruzzi. 
skip pass to Minikazi. He's got a little bit of space. He'll take it inside, draw the contact, no foul. Gets his own rebound. Annis inside the PJS. Easy tap. That was sick by Matt Annis. That was sick. 59-56. Two minutes and 40 seconds as Jackson Stevens guards Lawson. Lawson has been the story. Kicks it to Santos in the corner. Santos now to Auden. Auden can shoot and he can drive. He can do most of it as a strong take knocks it for two. And Arno had a hand on the ball there and the kid still finished. Naruzzi, long pass to Mack. Mack over to Minakazi. Nice runner is good. Both teams are scoring here. Punches in bunches. And Mack with a nice look out with a fake pass down low, giving himself a little space there. Very smart. Lawson uses the screen, dishes it off to Haddon. He finishes. Unbelievable action here. Mack Annis pulls it back, hands it off to Presto. Inside to Arno, turns and finishes. 63 to 60. Three straight buckets in the paint for Belmont. They are attacking out Will and getting their spots. Putting up Auden on the other side, doing anything he wants with the ball. Who's going to make the stop here as Lawson takes it right to the block and scores? There might be more points scored in the fourth quarter than have been scored in the first three. PJS drives and then pulls back. Minikazi to Presto. I believe that's Naruzzi. Minikazi now takes his time. This is what it's all about, folks. Arno sets the pick. Minikazi with nine on the clock drives. Can't finish. Latin Academy up with it. And they're moving. Two back for Belmont. Lawson kicks it out. That's Ali for three. No good. It's bouncing around and Martinez is up with it. Aden, he's dangerous. Minikazi on him, takes it inside. He can't finish. And they're going to draw the foul. That's Muhammad Ali drawing the foul. 63 to 62, so an opportunity to take the lead with 56.1 left in the game for Latin Academy here. And what, what Latin Academy's doing is as they're penetrating, they're clearing out and they're motioning, so Belmont is sustaining their man, especially a guy like Auden, you're worried about the three ball, you have to stay with it. And when you're playing press defense up, you're getting pushed with the offensive player underneath the basket, which takes you out of rebounding contention. This is why BLA is able to get so many rebounds right now. First shot by Auden is no good, so a tie is the best it can be hoped for. It is raucous. Second one, no good. Belmont retains the lead. Two big misses by the junior guard. Minikazi, 48 seconds. The stuff legends are made of is Preston Jackson Stevens is pressured by Ali. And he draws the foul. And that spins the shot clock back to 30. That's what I was going to say. It's not a damage of, of free throws. The issue there is you're resetting the shot clock. So now if Belmont takes her time, and they should, BLA is going to have one shot left and one possession left. That's a tough time to foul. Well, only had about 14 on the clock in that possession. PJS fights across half court. Minikazi takes the baseline, the foul. He's going to go to the line, and Latin Academy's going to draw a technical for swatting the ball out of bounds. That is a, a not a heady play in that moment by the Latin Academy Dragons, and it looks like it's going to cost them here. That is absolutely Ali the correct call. Muhammad Ali can't believe it right now. And, yeah, I mean, I mean, things just happen so quickly, but with the tensions, with the, the intensity here, you got to keep your composure. And, I mean, it's just, I, I don't think it was egregious. I don't think it was angry. It nope. just kind of happened. It was just an emotional moment. This kid's put his heart and soul into the game that he's played, and he for lost sure. his head there for a second. And anybody who's played sport at any competitive level has done that or knows what that feels like. I actually don't even think it was kind of, I don't know. Minikazi hits the first. The Belmont lead is two. And he'll have two more after this. He's at the line for four right now. Second is good by Tim Minikazi, and now Mac Annis will step in. This is, I'm assuming, the technical. Minikazi shot, got Minikazi it. shot his foul shots. 
And now Annis will shoot the key. I've never seen this before. So then does Belmont get the ball again? Belmont will Annis. have possession after the technical foul. That is very, that is much more costly than I anticipated. So four straight free throws by the Belmont Marauders make it 67-62. And the Marauders will have possession with the shot clock off. That's it. And close to off. Well, Point eight. They're at seven right now. Um, foul Should foul see a foul here. Balls. Jackson Stevens will be fouled by Aiden. Aiden, excuse me, and that's going to take PJS to the line. Mac bringing everyone together and telling them what they need to do, what they need to expect. It ain't over yet. Um, what's amazing on those free throws, Minikasi had less than no emotional reaction. He was just so locked in, hit both his, and it was just like, that's business. That's what I do. We love seeing that. That's, that's been Tim's way pretty much for the entirety of the time I've seen him play as Preston Jackson Stevens hits a big free throw to make it a six point game. And these six straight free throws, this will be gut wrenching for BLA. It will be six straight points from the stripe, make it five. Lawson now is gonna have to push the pace. Preston Jackson Stevens is up with it, uninterrupted to the basket. Eight point lead is Chet Messer is fired up. And they, they make it, they just uh, dinged up. PJS with a technical for uh, taunting. Oh, don't like to see that. Yeah. But again, an emotional moment. An emotional moment for both teams. An emotional moment for these kids. They are kids after all. I think with Preston, he is, he is like the most humble, like the most respectful he is. student I've ever seen. I think what happens just there is he's fired up. He's just basically sending his team to the songus and he's yelling. It just happens that a BLA kid is right there. I don't think it was malicious. He'll throw a little shade. There's a little, uh, there's a little juice to Preston Jackson Stevens. Not saying that's what he was doing, but I am saying that uh, he has been known once or twice to throw a little shade here and there. He does it in a very humble and respectful way, though. And the I, most humble and respectful. The most humble. The most humble. So, safe to say, as the Latin Academy student section begins to filter out here, this was absolutely the best basketball team that Belmont has seen By far. in the three games that we've called here in the postseason. What does it mean for them to be able to pull this game up? So, I mean, it was the first time they were tested, and what was great is they got to their lead in the third, and then BLA came back, and they were at the line. They never took the lead, but they were down one in the fourth. Oh, no, they tied it yep. on an odd and three, and so we have a tied game in the fourth quarter, and Belmont came back and kept making play after play after play. And one of the things I thought that happened last year in the in the uh, state semifinals against Kent Lawson is I thought they got a little tight in the last yep. three minutes. And I think they started to force some things. And they seemed calm, they seemed composed there. And you know, this Beverly team is definitely for real. And you know, they have a huge hurdle ahead of them before they get back to where they were last year. But, I mean, they've had state championship aspirations this whole year. You can see why. Coach Dan Bunker still coaching here. 18.7 seconds. It's only a six-point game right now. It's not. And Latin Academy has possession. So it's not unheard of. No, they would need, they need to hit a three here. And you know, you got a kid in Auden who can do that at will. And then you got a foul and you're in the free throw game. Fans are voicing their displeasure. Yeah, I thought, I actually thought the calls back and forth. Yeah. I mean, it was unfortunate at the end. It was on both sides. I thought both teams have played really hard. This has been a very entertaining game to watch. But again, I mean, it's a tough game to lose. But I got to be honest, the, the referees did not win or, or lose this game. No. You know, this was a game that was won and lost on the basketball court. It was won and lost by performance. Uh, these guys did not decide the course of the game. And I got to say that basketball is certainly a sport where because there's a level of, I don't want to say objectivity to officiating, it's just very easy for fans to immediately say, and oftentimes it's a two-point 
one possession, two possession game. Very easy to say, oh, you decided the game, referee. But this was two hard-nosed basketball teams going head-to-head, -head, playing great basketball. And I want to be clear, we do not want to sully the performance of either of those teams by claiming that officiating decided the result here. Because no, it did not. And it's still not over, you're it's right. It's not over. The inbounds from Martinez as the three from Lawson is up and no good. Arno to the floor. Preston Jackson Stevens to the floor. Jump the off. There. Arrow gives the ball to Belmont. 12.4. 12.4. And it's frustrating if you're Boston Latin Academy, there's, there's really, come on, think of it, there's nothing really to blame. I, I felt that down the stretch, Belmont outplayed them, hit some huge yep. shots. Minikasi, PJS were unreal in this fourth quarter. They were unreal in the third quarter. And I, I don't, it's it's not like one of, it's not like Otto went away. It's not like Santos went no. away. It's not like they were missing shots. It's not like the refs threw tees on both sides. It was just a great game, man. And yeah. Belmont played awesome. I mean, one of the things, too, is that for every missed call you can point to on one side, you can point to a, sure. a missed call on the other. You know, you got Mac in the corner there for a three. We, you know, we're sitting here saying we look like he got contacted, didn't draw the foul. He thought he got contacted. He sure as I said in the heat of the play, I've never seen him airball the ball. No. I mean, and that's just not something that he that he does. And I I didn't think it was a clean block. And, and you know, there was, if you're, I mean, if you're saying he hit the ball, he also hit the hand. I mean, that was obvious. Back onto the floor come the two teams as it will be Latin Academy. Excuse me, it will be Belmont basketball. Annis takes the inbound pass. He'll draw the foul and go to the line. So not conceding are the Latin Academy Dragons by any means. 11.3, no. six-point I mean, game. And Mac, conceivably, if Mac were to miss these two, we'd be in the same situation. They hit a three, they foul, and then you're in this, this tight game. But, you know, Mac's going to hit both of these. <laughs> and time will start taking off. Mac Annis at the strike. Sends the Belmont lead to seven. Belmont in full prevent defense mode. All four back. PJS, Arno, Shapazian, and Minikazi on the floor as Mac goes two for two. So BLA will move for one final shot here as it's Aden steps and shoots the three. Off the iron, no good. Gathers his own rebound. Head fake, draws the space. Second attempt is no good. Annis is up with it, and ladies and gentlemen, that's the ball game. Your Belmont Marauders defeating the Latin Academy Dragons, the three seed beating the two. 72 to 64 here at Wakefield, and that's going to send them to the Division II North. Final game against Beverly at the Songus Center on March 7th. Coach, this is a Belmont team that certainly deserves this moment and deserves this opportunity. Can you talk a little bit about what you feel like it means to these guys? So one of the things is they do so well, we saw this, they rely on each other. We've been calling these games, and sure, we have a three-headed monster of Minicosi, of Annis, and of uh, Preston Jackson Stevens doing a bulk of the score. But when we're talking about big plays tonight, you know, we're talking about Arno. We're talking about Kevin Logan with some huge rebounds. We're talking Marusi, who did not have the game he did against Bill Rico, which was his coming out party, one of the best games I've ever seen to play, but he played strong tonight. Not yep. a ton of turnovers. They were pressed early. They were rattled early, and they adjusted. They, I know on the full court press, PJS turned it over once. Naruzzi turned it over later in the second half. That's about it. Yeah. They were patient, and they made it. And, you know, this is a team, and they're a team that has roles to find, yep. never scores. You know, we have we have who's handling the ball, but other than they rely on each other. Yeah. And it's not one kid, it's not one or two guys, it's a team. And, you know, I thought they were going to be tough to beat all year. They're still here, they're still rolling on. Rolling on. we got three games left, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully we get more to call. Yeah, I mean, it was a really tremendous effort. And I got to give a ton of credit to Coach Bunker and his Latin Academy Dragon squad because, uh, as we said on the broadcast, I mean, that was a, a really, really good basketball team. What's scary is Stubbards, the only kid who was seeing minutes in that game, was graduating. Yeah. Um, it's a young, well, young, young team. Max, the only one who's 
We, well, we got Arno and Chapazian too yep. in the game. But yeah, I mean, that team is going to be full force next year, and they're going to be very scary in Absolutely. the D2 North next year. They're only going to get better. Belmont moves on, once again facing the Beverly Panthers on March 7th at the Songus Center. I know BMC and BHS Sports TV will be there. I know Chet Messer will be there. That's not even a question. Coach Strait, you got to be there? I got the crystal ball. All right. We, we actually have a big economic competition. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to go do the that. International Economic Summit. Fair enough. At, uh, Belmont High School, but we'll see when the times come All out. right. Well, hopefully you can finagle a bagel. We can get back on the pegs and do this because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it. I'm Coach Jan Kuman. He is the oft imitated but never duplicated Coach Joshua Strite, Jeremy Maserve, our director. Basketball, Belmont Basketball Institution, Chet Golden Pipes Messer. Over to my right, and on behalf of all of us in the BHS Sports TV family, thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you for the D2 North Finals in a little bit here.